reach and just the logistics of trying to build that thing alone. It's made up of around two, somewhere between two and two and a half million blocks of stone weighing, you know, any of it like two, three tons, some of them. Not every block of stone weighs two or three tons, as you can see in these pictures. Yes, there are a lot of extremely beautifully cut large blocks on the Giza pyramid, but it does also get progressively smaller as you go up. Does it seem that logistically crazy when you look at these pictures? The Sphinx, as we see it now, is this like lion that has a human's head. Yes. Right? But the head yeah. is too small for the body. That's crazy. And if you were a brilliant, uh, what are they called? A stonemason? Yeah, what was yeah. It called? Stone carver. Stone, stone, stone carver like that. You're not going to make a mistake like that. If you're the same people that build the pyramids to exact proportions, yeah. Yeah. you're not going to have this tiny little head and be like, oopsie, I guess we didn't figure that one out. Yeah. So what a common theme is, is that they came across the Sphinx and it had a lion's head. Mm -hmm. Or maybe there was just naturally bedrock sticking out of the ground and there wasn't enough bedrock to carve a two-scale head, so they didn't. Interesting thing about that too, it's like this, this story about the erosion because... It goes back to the, the, you know, the fissures on the wall in the enclosure. They say, oh, that's wind and sand erosion. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. this is what they say. And you're like, okay, well, if you give that thing 50 years, you know what happens, right? It, it, does, it fills up to its neck in sand yeah, or its chest no in sand. Yeah. yeah, so that's also why I don't believe that the erosion in the Sphinx enclosure is caused by wind and sand. I actually very much believe the theory that the limestone is just very close to the water level of Giza, that that bedrock has been eroded and has been eroding for millions of years already, before the Egyptians carved the Sphinx. And that is why you can scrape pieces of the bedrock off with your fingernail today. I thought, so you're basically saying it was protected by sand. Well, it so, can't be eroded. So well, that's the thing. How long does it take for this to be exposed? for it to be to, to get this wind and sand erosion on it yeah and then you know what you don't see on the head wind and sand erosion you don't see these vertical fissures but that's the part of the sphinx that's sticking that up above be... the sand that would be hit by wind and yeah, sand yeah, all the time yeah, yeah yeah and that's why with added context it makes sense why the enclosure wall is way more water eroded than the rest of the sphinx that ground was and has been eroding yes, about yeah. the head is the so are there chisel marks on are, it? Are the chisel marks as precise on the Sphinx's head as they are in the rest of the pyramids? Good question. Because I mean, if they're imprecise, that would speak to the ancient a Egyptians less civil, uh, or less not having advanced the civilization, yeah. technology. I don't think there's any uh, of what I would call the advanced tool marks on the head of the Sphinx, no. I won't lie, this looks pretty well crafted and precise to me. I don't know what precise Ben from Uncharted X wants, but... This looks pretty good. There's no evidence of the electromechanical technology. Well, yeah, there's nothing. Like, there's no computers. There's no... And there's right. the whole where, the, where are the tools argument is one that gets raised all the time. Yeah, not only the tools, but where's any other evidence for the existence of this civilization? And I think you hear this a lot of times with, like, uh, the, 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 the skepticism about ancient civilizations. It's yeah, like, yeah. okay, well, where they live? Where are the homes? Right. Where are all these things? These are good questions. They are. I, no, I think that we should be asking these questions. Fuck yeah, Andrew Schultz, I fuck with that. And um, I think it's good that you don't get defensive about those things. I, I, I think, yeah, and they're, they're valid questions. And I think there's a lot of, we haven't looked in a lot of the places where I think this stuff's gonna be for starters. And oh, I, I also, well. Where do you think it's gonna be? Well, I think Graham Hancock makes a great point about this, but it's like sea levels rose 400 feet all over the world. There's like 10 million square miles of land that went under. Wait, so they weren't in Egypt? Or they weren't in the places that you say these megalithic architecture couldn't have been done by the native people. They weren't there. They were only coincidentally, almost all of them on the coastlines, almost all of them coincidentally got wiped out. Damn, that's coincidental, bro. That is a coincidence. That would have been coastal and inhabited uh, mm. during, those, during these periods when the sea levels were far, far low. We don't look at that stuff. Marine archaeology is 100% focused on shipwrecks. This is where I 100% agree with Ben because marine archaeology doesn't really give a fuck about going on the coastlines and shores to look for potentially sunken cities that were lost during the Ice Age. That isn't actually a thing that happens, unfortunately. And Stephen Milo made a video where he kind of discusses this a little bit, and I'll link that in the description below if you are interested. Dog, I love this next clip. Benny's talking about cultural coincidence and how the stones are too megalithic, so that couldn't have been the case in Egypt. And then Mark's like, oh, but this happened. And then Ben's like, yeah. 
Andrew's like, oh, and this is also an example. And then Andrew also ends it off with another example of cultural influence. Users is what they call like, it's like cultural coincidence, or it's like they're solving, people all around the world solve the problem the same ways. I think right. a lot of that's nonsense when it comes to megalithic building. It's like you're literally choosing the hardest and most difficult way to right. do something. But like fire, like pyramids, every, every every culture yeah. develops fire. Yeah, fire or like or napping and making a spear. Like that's right, just, and that's all coincidence. That I, That's not, yeah, that's all like, that's we're solving this particular problem. Right. And what about the wheel? We can apply that's it pretty, to this. That happened around the world around the same time, right? Right? Yeah, more or less. People got there. Yeah, I mean, it's just that's. I just mean, the pyramid the thing, like everybody developing a pyramid at the same time, doesn't really strike me as as the most um, I th peculiar thing because that's just how you would build something, I right? You can't build straight up; it falls over. It's also very Maybe. difficult to build straight up. So exactly. we just build in this kind of like what is what, what are they called the step. A W Andrew Schultz. And then yeah, it's supposed to like stop tomb robbers from getting. That's what they just goes with the tomb theory, which I don't think these yeah. were tombs. There's there's. Fuck all evidence that they were, that these big ones were tombs. Did you hear how he switches from there's no evidence that they were tombs to there's no evidence that these big ones were tombs? So, so only one or two, like, what, bro, what are you saying? Like, they all tombs, bro. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not a tomb, what would you conjecture is the purpose? I think, I personally, my, and it's speculation, I think they were functional. I think they was they did something. I think they're all broken now. They don't work. Yes, of course they had a function. Obviously they were functional. What the fuck? Now nah, he straight up believes in the power plant theory for sure, or at least something along the lines of that, right? Gate and yeah, that's it there. Well, that's after they drilled through it. So that they're actually <laughs> and, they're, and on the door are these two what they say are copper copper uh, handles, but one of them's eroded more than the other. It's almost like it's an anode cathode. Like it may have been part of some sort of function. Like a fucking battery? Yeah, something like that. So part of Chris that's Dunn's theory, right. yeah. that's it there. So you had, this is what's at the end of this of this shaft. Get the fuck out yeah. of here. And then yeah, eventually- it's like a socket. Oh no, the indoctrination has started. This is nonsense. And it's, then to your point such an about achievement. building a pyramid just in that shape is the most functional to build. This is a functional thing. That's why we're gonna build it in a pyramid shape. 100%. Yeah. That is fucked. And they haven't drilled this past this. battery theory? They that was a W logical take from Akash. And Andrew Schultz has to come in with that battery theory, though? Why are they uh, so protective of this uh, theory of history? That's kind their of, claim to fame, my boy. That's all they yeah. got. I guess, but it's to Kenya. me, science is constantly disproving other science. They don't give a fuck about science. Yeah. They give a fuck about, like, yo, we're Egyptian. These pyramids are fire. Everybody loves these pyramids. We made them. And if this dickhead comes over there and goes, nah, it was some other people 30,000 years ago. You just bumped in on it. Yeah. They're like, man, shut the fuck up. Uh, I'm I guess not going to let you discredit our whole shit. I That's... guess in my mind, they're still Egyptian, and it would still be like, yo, we survived the motherfucking apocalypse. We came back. Yeah. We're still here. That's a good, there's a good argument to that. The, but I think they might look at it like, man, we didn't really do shit since yeah. back in the day. I can't be the only one that finds this disrespectful, right? Like, I heard from somebody that the Egyptians in Egypt are very proud of their history and the fact that it's such a big tourist site. Your scientific work, mm -hmm. we should be taking that into account, but, you know, there's a, the problem arises when it starts to pull the rug out of the people that have, have really set what that story is. And it honestly, the story of history and civilization hasn't changed for around 100 years. It still hasn't changed, even with Gobekli Tepe. We still say, well, civilization started 6,000 years ago with the Sumerians, then the Egyptians, and then the Greeks and Romans, Chinese, all this other stuff. Yeah. Um, From the mainstream archaeologist view, it's basically like when you find cultural evidence of this civilization existing, then we can talk. Placing these 70-ton yeah. granite blocks around it is very special. But when you look at the grandiosity of like the dynastic, dynastic right. Egyptians, right. it's not reflected in this room in any way. And if that was the king's room, like for a king, then I think it'd be a little different. It makes way more sense to me that this is a power factory. Yep, that club says it all for itself. This is where it comes back to that question about are, are they Egyptians? Dynastic whoa, Egyptians whoa, from- Whoa, go back one. That's the Colossi of Memnon. Fucking hell. Yeah. And that's all granite. That's all granite. Well, well actually quartzite. But Has similar. this been Yes, that is the question. Is this statue Egyptian? Are all the Egyptian things in Egyptian architectural design Egyptian? Anyway, that's going to be the video. I'm so tired of editing. If you made it this far, I appreciate you. Leave your comments down below. I'll get back to them as soon as I can. Have a good day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. It makes way more sense to me that this is a power factory.